In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 13, verses 22 to 33. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first and there are first who will be last. On that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, Get out of and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow and the third day. I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. In today's passage, the Lord uh, is asked the question, Are there few who enter into the kingdom? And the church fathers, you know, recognize and kind of point out how the Lord doesn't really answer the man's question. Instead, what he does is he answers the question of how to enter the kingdom and how to be saved. And so um, it, the, the man comes and asks, are there many? And he says, let me tell you how to be saved. And his answer is very strong. He says, strive to enter through the narrow, narrow gate. We're going to look at this passage uh, over a couple of days because there's so much going on. Today I want to start off with a quote from one of the church fathers, St. Cyril of Alexandria. And he describes this uh, narrow gate and its opposite, the wide gate. He says, Wide is the door and broad is the way that brings down many to destruction. What are we to understand by its broadness? It means an unrestrained tendency towards carnal lust and a shameful and pleasure-loving life. It is luxurious feasts, parties, banquets, and unrestricted inclinations to everything that is condemned by the law and displeasing to God. A stubborn mind will not bow to the, to the yoke of the law. This life is cursed and relaxed in all carelessness thrusting from it the divine law and completely unmindful of the sacred commandments. Wealth, vices, scorn, pride, and the empty imagination of earthly pride spring from it. Those who would enter in by the narrow door must withdraw from all these things. Be with Christ and keep the festival with him. Wow. St. Cyril is so bold in describing the narrow gate. He doesn't hide behind what sounds acceptable to his time or what may, may be easily received. I mean, the whole point of the passage is to strive to enter through the narrow gate. And so he reveals that the, the, the wide gate is, is this unrestrained um, uh, pursuit of pleasure, of comfort, of luxury. Doesn't that sound like the American dream? Doesn't that sound like everything we're taught to strive for? Doesn't that sound like the freedom that is being offered to us? Do what you want. Strive to have as much fun, as much entertainment as possible. Well, this is, the, this is the road that leads to destruction. In fact, the narrow gate is the opposite. The narrow gate is also a festival, St. Cyril of Alexandria says, but he says, keep that festival with Christ. 
be with him. Let him be your luxury. Let him be your comfort. Let him be your celebration. Let him be your portion in this earth. This is the striving for the narrow gate. You see, there's no room for the ego to enter into the narrow gate. There's no room in the kingdom for the ego. The ego is that part of you that constantly strives to make you feel like a God without God. And so we must, in order to enter the kingdom, we must strive to shed everything that is not kingdom-like, to shed our ego, our pride, our carnal lusts and desires for pleasure and comfort and luxuries. We must strive to become small, small like Jesus, small in humility, small in concern for ourselves. This is the narrow gate. And the word that the Lord uses, the verb in front of it is strive. The word strive makes me think of, of athletes who practice, who train for something. They're striving for, for an Olympic medal. Well, here, our medal or our striving is for union with God. Our striving is to enter through the narrow gate, to be in union with the one who fit through the narrow gate originally. In fact, not only did he fit, but he is the narrow gate. He is the narrow gate. The Lord himself is the gate that we must enter through. And in him is no ego, only love, only humility, only self-sacrifice. Today, may we shed our old man and his old ways. May today we shed everything that offends, everything that is not of the kingdom, everything that is not love. And rather, may we strive today to be, um, to fit through the narrow gate, through self-sacrificing, self-forgetting love. Have a beautiful day.